Hey guys, Mars Thinking here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. And so today, to continue on with the anniversary guides, uh, this one was actually requested by a few people in the community. So I'm going to do a video talking about the standby abilities for the two anniversary units and how they work. Now, obviously for global, as has often happened over the years, we did get this mechanic early with the release of the Tech 23rd World Tournament Goku. Uh, there are currently two types of uh, standbys in the game. Uh, there is the revival type, which is the one that this Tech World Tournament Goku has, where you go into the standby mode and then if you die, you get a revival. Something triggers, usually an attack, and then of course you revive and go back to normal. And then there is the charge variety, where you have to charge up a certain amount of key by picking up orbs. And usually there are two effects, one if you use it without getting the required number of charges, and then one if you do get the required number of charges or more. And considering the fact that the global Twitter itself even messed up the other day and posted a preview for the GT Super Saiyans, and then posted the uh, conditions for uh, the wrong unit, because these are the conditions for the Boo Duo instead, and then had to post a correction afterwards. I wouldn't be surprised if anyone out there who doesn't closely follow JP is genuinely confused about the standby abilities for the anniversary LRs. I'm pretty sure I just said GT Super Saiyans as well, considering Goku's in base, but never mind. Um, yeah, so we're going to go through the anniversary unit standbys. I'm going to explain how they work and what they do. And obviously I can show gameplay from the JP side to actually show those abilities in action rather than just talking about them. So we're going to do the Boo Duo one first. So let's switch over to the game and go ahead and check that one out. Okay, so here we have the Boo Duo on rotation. Uh, I'm running them on the Vegeta and Trunks team, uh, one of the teams where they do get the full 200% leader skill. Obviously, that's not really super important for the purposes of the video, but we're going to go ahead and check out their standby ability. So their standby condition uh, can be activated when HP is 50% or less with no turn restriction. So for things like Super Battle Road, if you're going into like a fresh fight, and you're below the HP, you can just use it straight away. Or, after performing four or more attacks during battle, starting from the fourth turn. So, th that one is turn restricted, even if you get four attacks with them on turn one. Technically, their next rotation would be turn three, but you wouldn't be able to use it straight away. Now, the good thing about this is it is four attacks, and not four super attacks. Because one of the abilities that they have is if you get 18 key, which we did on this turn, they launch a guaranteed additional attack that has a great chance to become a super. Now you can see here, we did get the RNG, it is 70%, um, but even if it was a normal attack, it would still have built up towards uh, the four attacks total. We did not get the hidden potential, um, so you can see we only did two attacks on this turn. But as long as you can get 18 key, you're always going to do a minimum of two attacks, even if the one from the passive is only a normal attack. So without hitting the HP threshold, um, if they're on turn one, you can't use the standby on turn three anyway. Um, and then you're going to be like fully ready to use it on turn five because they do a minimum of two attacks per turn. So back with them on their second turn. Um, we didn't drop below 50% HP, so as you can see, we can't use the uh, standby ability just yet. Um, let's go for... grab this for you. Uh, both the anniversary LRs do have the ability where they get a ton of extra key in slot 2. So as you can see here, we're able to get the full 24 key. Getting to 24 key really does help you build towards their standby faster because 24 key gives them a guaranteed additional super, which means on this turn, even if the passive attack is only a normal, we will do three attacks minimum. And then obviously with these units that have built in additionals, the more attacks they do in the turn, the more chances they have to activate their hidden potential. So on the best possible turn with these guys, they can do four attacks. It's just the fact that, as I said, if you do get that great RNG on turn one and they do four attacks, you can't use their standby on turn three, right? It's minimum turn four. Now, if they started on turn two and you get four attacks, then, yeah, there you go. You can use their standby straight away on the next turn. 
Now, this is another thing you have to bear in mind, is because their condition is based on the number of attacks they do, if their first super of this turn had actually killed Cell, rather than leaving him with a small sliver of health, then obviously we would only have been at three attacks. And so then that kind of actively, negatively works against their um, them hitting the standby, which is uh, just one of those things, right? It's always been the case with units that need to attack to build up, is you can just get unlucky sometimes and uh, they kill the enemy too quickly and you don't get to do all the attacks that you need to do. But because they have so many attacks built in, um, they can have many opportunities to actually get these attacks and uh, build up what they need. Because especially for the Boo Duo as well, they infinitely stack defense with each of their supers. So every super attack you get is making them stronger and stronger as you go through the event defensively. So situations like that where they kill the enemy too quickly and they don't get all of their additional supers is obviously technically detrimental to them in the long run because they're not getting that extra defense that they would be building up. So something to bear in mind. Um, but yeah, we'll get the super attack with Carnival Goku here. We've got type disadvantage, so probably not going to do too much damage here. And then we will move into the turn where we can actually activate the standby. So... We've met the condition of getting four attacks. We are obviously on at least turn four, because we're on turn six. And so we will go ahead and uh, stand by into Vegeta. So obviously this is the JP version, so it's the JP version of the active skill. They did show the English dub version on the official global Twitter page. Um, I saw some people with some like bad feedback. I thought it sounded decent. Um, there's a few of the global dub active skills that I think didn't really come out very well, but I think this one is pretty good. So anyway, Goku starts charging the spirit bomb. Vegeta is there ready to uh, protect him while it charges. And so this is the unit that you exchange into. So this is the unit, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are currently two types of standby in the game. There's the revival type and the charge type. And this one is the charge type. So the way this works is you need to build up charges by picking up orbs. And the more orbs you pick up, the quicker you charge it. So we can grab seven orbs here with uh, Goku in slot one. And uh, then we can grab eight orbs here with the Vegeta. Now when in the standby mode, uh, Vegeta cannot attack. Uh, he gets 250% defense, guards all attacks for four turns, randomly changes key spheres to rainbow, reduces damage received by 8% per key sphere obtained. So we just picked up, uh, was it eight orbs? So that gives him 64% damage reduction, which is pretty good. Uh, and then he gets a, you get a big attack boost when you do the finish attack. So the idea is always going to want to be to try and get as many orbs as you can. Now, sometimes you have to think carefully about how to play, because like if we're on low HP, we might want to pick up these tech orbs with Gohan to heal, but then we're only going to pick up three orbs, whereas if we pick up the ones at the side here, we're going to pick up six, which obviously helps us to charge the charge gauge faster. So to get the charge and to fire off the spirit bomb, um, you need to get up to 39 or more charges. And the more charges you get, the more powerful it will be because you get an attack modifier based on the number of charges. So when you fire it off at the full 39 or more, you get 20% attack per charge counter accumulated. So that means if you overcharge it, you just still get more of a buff. If it's 38 charges or less, you still do a weaker version of the Spirit Bomb. And that is 15% per charge. So considering you're losing 5 per charge, and you've probably got a good like 20 or 30 odd, if you are still firing it off early, you are losing out on a pretty significant amount of numbers there. So we're at 30, I need to get to 39. There's 6 there, so let's grab those. And then can we get 4 for you for the 18 key? We can't, but we can get 3 key which gets us to 39. So that means we are fully charged going into the next turn. Now, one of the things you have to remember about the standby abilities, and this works for both types, is that the unit only exchanges into the standby for a certain number of turns. So if you don't use it, then they just go back to normal. And you can't use the standby more than once. Now, as far as I understand, even if you don't actually fire off the spirit bomb, you can't then just use the standby again just because you didn't use it, right? So you have to be very, very careful. Now, 
Goku and Vegeta exchange into Vegeta for, is it five turns? Yeah, five turns, which means technically they get three rotations. Because obviously when they exchange, or standby, that's the first turn. The next time they come around, that's the third turn, because it counts the turns that get skipped that they're not on. And then when they come around for the third time, that's turn five. So on that turn, you have to use it, otherwise they go back to normal. Now, one of the things that I noticed straight away with the new full power Goku that's on JP, they only exchange for four turns, which means you stand by into Oob, and then on the next turn, you have to use it. Because by the time it comes back around to them again, it will have been five turns and you just go back to normal Super Saiyan 4 Goku. So the one thing you have to remember as well that you can do is uh, the ability can be used now and we have 39 charges. But if I want to leave these guys in slot two, not that it really matters because we're not getting any extra links or anything. But if I pick up these orbs with Goku in slot one, I pick up an extra five orbs. So now I have 44 charges. So now, when I use the Spirit Bomb, we have those extra five charges, which means if it's 20% per charge, we're getting an extra 100% extra attack on here, basically. So this is the fully charged Spirit Bomb. Um, I have no doubts whatsoever this will kill Cell, as he's got less than half HP at this point anyway. Um, and so yeah, there you go. You get your charges, you fire off the Spirit Bomb. Um, I'll add in a clip, I guess, here of doing the uh, weaker version if you get less than... 39 charges but ideally unless you're getting screwed over by the orbs um you should be able to hit 39 charges because you get the five turns and then there's that sweet ko screen as well so there you go that is the boo duo uh, spirit bomb standby ability okay so this is the weaker version of the spirit bomb if you don't get all of the charges uh, don't worry too much about um how difficult it will be to get all of the orbs um obviously as i said before you can get screwed over by a bad field of orbs but this is the turn after i went into the exchange meaning if i wanted to i could still put it off until they come back again and i had to try not to get enough orbs so we're already at 29 and since the maximum is 39, like there's no way I would get round to them coming back again without having picked up 10 orbs. So you don't have to worry about it too much unless you get really bad luck. Um, but yeah, this is the weaker version of the Spirit Bomb. I mean, it's still a cool animation, and we still did, like, 10 million damage. But, yeah, obviously you want to go for the uh, the fully juiced-up version. So, let's move on to the GT. Okay, so, here we have the GT duo on rotation. So, their standby ability is the revival type, similar to the 23rd World Tournament Goku. The conditions are similar to the Boo duo, but slightly different. They still have the HP is 50% or less um, restriction, which has no turn restriction and then their secondary qualification does have the turn four restriction but rather than attacking four or more times they have to receive four or more attacks now the interesting thing with them is whilst the boo duo are kind of based on rng of whether you're getting their additionals or not but as we've already discussed if you can get 24 key they're already doing a minimum of three attacks per turn anyway but with the GT duo, you kind of are left to the RNG of like where the enemy attacks are going to be placed on the turn. And then, of course, you still run into the same issue that we were talking about before with build up units, where if, you know, these guys pop off and do like three supers with all crits and kill the enemy, then they don't get hit at all. So that is something you obviously have to bear in mind, like it's very possible to go into events where, you know, maybe you've got the rotation where you want to keep the GT duo on that rotation, but then there's only like one attack in slot one, one attack in slot two, but then there's like four in slot three. So you could put them in slot three and they're not going to come back for a three turns, but then they get all the hits that they need for their um, standby but you have to float them off rotation or you keep them on rotation and they only get hit once, which means unless you then get on the next turn, a slot where there are three attacks, 
it kind of puts you like a turn behind the pace if you want to get their standby ability as quickly as possible so unfortunately it does just come down to where the enemy is attacking like this would have been a good turn for example to be the first turn because there are three attacks in slot one but we did get hit twice so we will jump ahead to the um, next turn and see how many attacks are on the rotation uh, for their second appearance Okay, so we got an interesting mix of good and bad RNG on this turn because we uh, failed to kill Cell on the previous turn. So it means whoever's attacking first on this rotation would be very likely to kill him. However, he is attacking enough times in slot 1 that we can put these guys in slot 1 to get those hits. Now, in some events, that can be dangerous to do as well because remember, compared to the Boo duo who stack defense, these guys stack attack and then they build up damage reduction. So start of turn, they only have 288k defense. They have a little bit of damage reduction from their super attacks on the previous turn. But it means if they were to get immediately supered in slot 1 here, we probably would take some damage. Now fortunately in this event, because we are only in the first turn, probably wouldn't be too much. But either way, we get our two hits in. There was three uh, actions in slot 1. One of them was a heal but two of them were attacks, so Cell hit us twice, healed, and that means that the GT duo have been hit four times. Then they get the KO, so it's a good thing they don't need to attack a certain number of times to build up. Um, so let us skip ahead to their standby. Okay, so here we are on the next rotation. Now we can activate the standby. Um, so we stand by into uh, Super Saiyan Vegeta. Uh, backed up by uh, Goten, Trunks and Gohan and as I said this is the revival type of uh, standby so this works like a lot of units like the um, I think Goku does the same actually the world tournament Goku but units like um, future Gohan where the unit is essentially designed to die right like Vegeta gets uh, quite low defense um, in fact, I think he only gets defense when you're at 50% or above HP. So if you've gotten the standby early because you were below a certain HP threshold, um, then he uh, basically has no defense, right? So if we look at him here, even with his defensive buff, he only has 200k. Um, I mean, that is enough to take normals from a lot of enemies. But just like the Boo duo, you do have five turns of this standby. And the thing is, you might not necessarily just want to get immediately killed and get this revival. Because whilst in this Vegeta form, he gives all allies 8 key and 80% attack. So I think that makes him the single biggest attack buffing support unit in the entire game. So that is pretty good. Um, his super attack, he also does uh, raise super class allies attack by 40% for one turn. So if you're putting him in slot 1 and getting his 18 key super, he is giving a ridiculous amount of attack to the rotation. Um, however, we do want to see the standby for the purposes of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and put him in slot 3. Um, he doesn't raise defense on any of his super attacks because obviously, ideally, you do want him to die. Um, and then, of course, you can uh, get the revival. Not only do you, of course, revive and stay alive, but then you fire off the spirit bomb with the GT Goku. Now, the thing with the GT duo is because they infinitely stack attack in their first form before you go into the standby, the more times you super with them, the more powerful the spirit bomb will be when you eventually use it because compared to the physical one like you don't charge it up with charge counters so you can't overcharge it past a certain point you literally just have to get it when it goes off right so the earlier you go into the standby essentially the weaker it will be it can still be very strong but the weaker it will be because the less attacks you've done with the um the actual GT duo in their like quote unquote base form. Now GT Vegeta still putting out an 11 million attack stat so I think he's actually going to kill him yeah <laughs> so we're gonna have to wait until the next rotation to actually get killed but that is a good example of what you can use him for right so unfortunately because I floated him as well it's going to be a while till he comes back so let's uh, skip ahead and then we'll just make sure he dies next time. 
Okay, so we've got our boy back on rotation. We're in the AGL cell phase. Uh, pretty sure there's no way we don't die in this situation. So, yeah, we only have 200k defense. So, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, just grab whatever orbs, I guess. I suppose there's no point grabbing the same type of orbs. But, I mean, we're going to die regardless, right? So, yeah, we can get our revival type standby ability off here. 261k. And we've still got three attacks to go. <laughs> so, yeah, the uh, whole purpose of this Vegeta pretty much is to die. But, as you saw from the previous turn, like, he provides quite a lot of utility for the team while he is still alive. So, you can do what we did here, and, although well, it was kind of an accident, but do it on purpose where you keep him alive for the first couple of appearances. And then on that final turn, get the actual kill, and then you can, like, will get him killed and then you can take advantage of all of that support that he's providing to the rest of the rotation so but anyway he gets uh killed quote unquote and then here comes uh base gt goku with the universal spirit bomb and uh, with these guys being str they obviously have some crit built in already crit is good for both of these guys i went over the builds yesterday in the video i did so make sure you check that out if you want to see the best hidden potential builds for all the anniversary units and of course we didn't crit because if we did we would have killed because of the type advantage but yeah there you go that is the gt duo revival type standby ability so let me know down below in the comment section which one of the two is your favorite um, hopefully you guys now, if you didn't before, have a full understanding of how these work. Any further questions, obviously feel free to ask down below and I will do my best to answer them all. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Master Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store and I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.